Everybody happy? Okay. Yeah, look, it's a, re it's a really good news story and uh, it's one that we really enjoy uh, talking about. So as you know, uh, on Sunday, Deborah Pilgrim, a 55-year-old, was at a party uh, at Sedan and uh, um, went for a walk in the early hours of the morning um, and uh, didn't return, which caused uh, her, or her partner and, uh, and friends to be greatly concerned. The police were called and we've spent the last three days searching basically a six square kilometre area uh, trying to find her. Um, last night, uh, through uh, the, the media's help getting the message out there, uh, some, uh, some people who own a recreational block um, um, in Sedan Swan Reach area happened to, uh, to look in their CCTV, which is hooked up to this house, and saw an SOS sign um, engraved in the, in the dirt in the field of view of the camera. Um, again, they called 131444, advised us of what they'd seen, which is what we asked the community to do in a, in a timely fashion. And uh, the police attended and found Deborah safe and well, about a kilometre away from, from that location. Great news story. Uh, obviously, she was very happy to see the police. Um, she's in good spirits, a bit dehydrated, so she spent the night in the, uh, in the Angerston Hospital um, and my understanding is she's been released and is now back home. Um, as uh, I, mean, I think we, ha we held grave fears for her safety. Not, we, we weren't of the belief that it was a suspicious uh, disappearance but we were really concerned that that scrubby and that, that area is quite harsh. Uh, there's some pretty heavy scrub area, very easy to lose your footing. And of course, uh, with, uh, with venomous reptiles around the place, if she'd been snake struck, um, she would have been in all sorts of, uh, of grief. Uh, so it's a really good news story. She's home safe and sound and has an adventure to talk about. Um, we get the opportunity to, uh, to go through a pretty intensive uh, debrief exercise with not only, uh, not only Deborah to understand uh, what she was thinking, what she was doing, so we can maybe apply that to future searches and, and understand human behaviour. But also, it was a uh, we could debrief the uh, the field search coordinator's work um, and the uh, the invaluable work that the volunteers, emergency services, SES, CFS, um, civilians who came in and just off their own back, locals who who helped us. We can put all that together, look at it, and find opportunities to actually do better next time. As the uh, light faded on that third day of the search, what did you think the chances were of finding her alive? Oh, look, we, were, we were concerned. We, we had a, a very very clear plan about what we were searching um, uh, based on the field search coordinators uh, and the information that we'd had. And realistically, once we'd come to the end of the search, uh, had we finished the search today, uh, we would have been satisfied she wasn't within an area and then it would have been a needle in a haystack. And uh, it, would have been, it would have been a really difficult investigation, missing persons investigation, um, to basically sit down, start from square one and try and work out where possibly she might be and strategies to actually get word to her to actually either either make contact or, uh, or do something so we could find her or get the public's help in, in trying to find her. So where she was found, was that out of your sort of search quarter? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So she was found about seven kilometres from her last known point. So we'd been searching uh, effectively a six square kilometre area. So she was a couple of k's uh, east of where we we were. Today we would have gone probably a bit closer to her to where she was, but we wouldn't have we probably wouldn't have got to that far out um, t uh, to to search that area. And it's, it's where she was was pretty heavy scrub. How disorientating is that kind of terrain? Oh, I mean, well, I mean she, uh, and again, I, I need you, I guess we need to put this into into the the context of where she was at. So it was early morning, uh, they'd, they'd obviously been there having a party. Um, so she'd gone for a walk, got a bit tired, bit dehydrated, probably had a rest and a bit of a sleep, woke up and then was completely disorientated. So she kept walking and, you know, um, kept walking and trying to find some water because she's dehydrated and, and probably a little bit, uh, little bit uh, concerned. Um, and then basically she found this, uh, this location uh, a, a basically a, a, a remote house, a fibro house, and uh, that's where she sort of made camp and found some shelter. Um, 
My understanding is she'd uh, uh, used some of the water at that location, which made her incredibly ill. So she basically lost a day being terribly ill um, and sleeping, and, uh, and, and then by the time she got uh, sort of well again, she went for a search for fresher water um, and then basically spent time sleeping and, and, and realised the CCTV. So wrote the SOS in the hope that it was being monitored, you know, kudos to her, um, and just basically kept herself occupied, hoping to, uh, to um, uh, raise the alarm or, or be seen by either the police chopper, which apparently she, she saw or heard, but it never quite came close enough. She set some fires to try and um, uh, raise some smoke and get distressed. That didn't work. And, and then basically thanks again to, uh, to the, the residents who were, who were monitoring this remote CCTV, we were able to hone in. Given that, uh, her state, you know, you say she was ill, obviously dehydrated, mm. did that thinking to write that message, did that save her life ultimately? Oh, it, it's, yeah, well, it certainly gave us somewhere to go, so yeah, potentially. Potentially. I mean, th th her alternative was to keep walking and move away from that location. And that's, that we find in our experience, that's fatal. If you get lost, stop and prop. Or find yourself sh shelter and stop, prop and wait for help. Because if you keep searching for help, uh, we've got no hope of, of ever actually finding you and you know, you're, you're exposed to the elements and, and a lot of people perish actually trying to work to walk out to get help. So yeah, look, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a very smart, uh, very, very sensible thing that she did. You mentioned she was able to find some water sources. Was mm. she able to find food? I mean, three days without food. Yeah, no, she was a bit hungry when we, when we picked her up. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, no, my understanding is it's basically water. Um, the water that made her very sick and then the, uh, the second property she found some soda water. So I think that, uh, that, that probably helped her along a bit. But yeah, she was definitely hungry. Uh, well, no, I was actually at home. I was getting phone calls from uh, Barry CRB, who was getting information relayed from uh, the officer in charge of Swan Reach and Madam. Have you had a chance to speak to those officers, though? No, they, I've, unfortunately, I've been uh, busy all day, so I'll catch up with them tomorrow. That must have been a remarkable find in a moment for them. Yeah, look, uh, w when I got the initial phone call from the CRB going, hey, look, we, Mr Marriott uh, has rung saying we've got an SOS in the field of view of our CCTV, Around the uh, the Swan Reach sedan area, it's like there was a bit of a there was a bit of euphoria about wow, there's our break, and you've got to be very careful with that that you don't get too excited and 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 think it's all it's all fixed until you know, you actually identify that she's well safe and sound. But there was definitely a uh, there was definitely a buzz because after three and a half or well, three days, you know we as I say we were we were really concerned for her. Um, Oh, look, we got the phone call around just before nine o'clock, um, and basically the patrols were um, on site an hour, hour so after that, uh, and they they went to the original the, the the property where the SOS is, found some clothing which we were able to actually and some uh, some effects which we were able to actually identify as being Deborah's, which gave us a a, a real real jolt and and we knew we were on the right track. And then the, uh, they uh, they heard some noise and went to another property which is about a kilometre southwest of there, and uh, and there was Deborah, hollering and yelling and being being very very happy that the police had actually arrived and I mean she'd obviously heard the sirens and and seen the blue lights flashing um, as as we do when we're trying to attract someone's attention, and uh, yeah we were, we were able to look after her and get her some some medical attention some much needed rest and some hydration and some food. Those properties that she stayed at for the first 47 days and night, were they homes that people weren't living at or...? Well, they're, they're, they're bush retreats effectively. So they're, they're people, uh, it's properties of people who live uh, in the Adelaide Hills mm -hmm. and they, ha they effectively have these 60 acre blocks and they've got, a, they've got um, for want of a better word, a shack on them. Were you aware that people were checking the CCTV and would you occasionally when you wanted to...? Look, we well, not not specifically, Mr. Marriott. Well, I mean, we're we're well aware that some properties do have CCTV, um, and with the the current technology, people are able to remotely access it on their mobile phones. Um, and it was always our hope, although it wasn't specifically referenced. It was always our hope that when we actually asked in the in the press release of the of Monday, you know, for people to actually check their premises and actually be aware that that's exactly what would happen. And uh, and sure enough. 
that's what we got. Luckily, they ch they've got into a habit of checking their CCTV pretty well every day. And given essentially she was found out of this sort of search plan for you guys, mm. I mean, how's that going to shape potential future searches? Now? Well, again, that's a, that's a really good question. We'll, uh, we'll obviously take that um, uh, under advisement. Um, uh, the field search coordinators are attached to uh, STAR Group. Um, so, you know, it's, it's one of many searches and, uh, and, and, uh, and results that they'll, uh, that they'll sort of uh, compile and, and continue to build a library of reference of, uh, of where we actually go. You know, at, at, the, at the end of the day, searching that area when you actually only know a last name point uh, is a very difficult uh, and incredibly labour intensive exercise. Um, and so, yeah, there, there are always learnings and we'll do the best we can to, uh, to, to pick a learning out of, uh, out of this um, adventure. Last question. Just to clarify, were you going to call off the search after today? Uh, today, would have been, today would have been the end of, of searching the designated area and maybe some of the surrounds uh, and then it would have been back to square one um, um, investigation conference with other um, specialist uh, CIBs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we're, we're very, very pleased that, uh, that it, it sort of resolved itself last night. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks,